right, so you already got the first part of that. That was Pentateuch, and I heard you say what the first book was. That was Genesis. Very good. Genesis. All right. Numbers. 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 Very good. That's the first part. What's the next part? History. History. All right. Joshua. Yep. Judges. Yep. No, not yet. A little. There you go. Ruth, now. You said it, Fred. First Samuel. Yep. Second. All right. First and second Chronicles. And the first and second. First and second Kings, first and second Chronicles. Ezra. Yep. Esther. Very good. What's next? Wisdom. I, I beat you to it. No, you sure did. <laughs> my, my thumb, my clicker was yeah, fast. You were. You got fast on the trigger. I right? was. <laughs> That's all right. I know y'all didn't mind. Psalm. Proverbs. Psalm of Psalm. 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 different time periods 
one of the one of the time periods that is suggested is that this was a time uh, maybe right before or or during maybe around Jeremiah's time uh, because of the information talking about Edom and uh, we do know that um, and we'll talk about this in a minute we do know that uh, that there was a history uh, with Israel and Edom and it goes back a long ways we know that there was uh, some history at the time when the Babylonians uh, were uh, um, coming down on Judah and Jerusalem we know that uh, uh, the situation there with the Edomites as far as how they were treating uh, those uh, in Israel or those fleeing from Israel. So we know that there's a connection there. But this talks about the downfall of Edom. And so we have a pretty good idea of when that took place. And that was during uh, that Babylonian time. And, um, you know, it, it says here that they would come to an end, and, and they have, uh, because they were pretty much driven out or, or killed. Uh, and they met their demise, and other people moved into their 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 territory. Uh, and you know, even today, um, their their primary city uh, is is not occupied today. It's a, it's a tourist attraction. And uh, if I'm mistaken, I think y'all have been there, Petra. Petra. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was that, that was their capital city. Uh, there, there in Hedon. So, as you've seen, uh, it's... So, Edom was, was, was it Jordan then, or? No. Uh, no, no. That's no, it was, it was Edom. Edom, yeah. Edom, okay. Yeah, it, it was Edom, and then, uh, uh, then came uh, the Idumeans and the, and the Nabataeans. They, they ended up um, inhabiting the land. Okay. Um, but uh, anyway, it's, it's, it's not inhabited right there now. Um, they lived there at the time, uh, there in Petra, but uh, of course well, that's... Who built all this? Uh, that that would have that uh, came through around that time. Uh, they they would have came in and, and uh, built... So the, the Babylonians... No, the Babylonians didn't build it. They, no, they, they came in and conquered the people. Okay. Yeah. Now you you've been there, so you know you can. Yeah. Uh, as as I want to talk about that in just a minute as we get into the first part of that because it, you know it uh, um, because you you know I've talked about it whenever I've uh, discussed Revelation because there's people you know talk about Petra being the the refuge uh, for those that are fleeing, um, but I uh, just want to talk about that here in a second. Uh, but like I said, you know, this uh, as far as being able to date this, it seems like that that's uh, it's not concrete because we don't really have any any other information here or time markers. But it seems like, given the context of what he's saying about Edom and and the things that did happen to them around the time frame of the Babylonian invasion and Jeremiah, it seems like that that maybe it could have taken place during that time frame. So that that gives you that gives you kind of a time frame to look at because as we've talked about. Uh, when when the Babylonians came down, they you know they 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 wiped out Jerusalem and Judah, and it came in waves. Uh, and then you know those who had helped Babylon, eventually you know we we've discussed that in other books how uh, when the judgment came on the nations, uh, when Babylon actually used some of these other uh, some of these other peoples to help them conquer, Babylonians then went in and took them over too. Uh, and kind of, you know, they were an ally, and then they turned their back on them and just conquered them. Well, what century was that? Uh, this would have been, see the... About the eighth? Sixth century? Six. Yeah. So this this would have been in the 500s. Because the... Um, be BC? Yeah. Yeah. So, let's see... Um, Jerusalem fell in, in 586 BC, and so the first wave of the Babylonians would have came in in six, I think 609, 607 BC, and then they came down again in 597 BC, and then again the final, uh, final order of business when they completely destroyed Jerusalem and just leveled it uh, and took everybody away. That was in 586 BC. Well, they. Uh Jerusalem was destroyed about eight times, wasn't it? 
Yeah, it's, it's uh, I don't know how many times it's been destroyed, but I know it's, uh, you know, they've had, uh, they've had a lot of battles there. Well, well you know, we were talking about that last week, you know, what, you know, I was amazed at how they could come in and, and, and level all the big stones and everything. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing, the, the architectural feats uh, that they were able to, to do. Um, As we look at this, um, we're just going to go through this. It's only one chapter, 21 verses, so we're just going to read it through because it's not going to take too much time here. Um, but verse 1 talks about the vision of Obadiah, and there's really, there's really no breakdown of how you break this book down. I mean, it's, you can, um, but it's, it's just 21 verses. Uh, but the, the three quarters of the book talks about judgment, and then there's a couple verses there at the end that talk about restoration. That's a common thing that you see throughout the minor prophets: is judgment and small parts of restoration. This one's the same. Um, the first two verses uh, tells us about the message, and then it tells us about the mission. Uh, it says uh, the, the vision of Obadiah. Thus says the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a report from the Lord. A messenger has been sent among the nations. Rise up, let us rise up against her for battle. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be utterly despised. And so that 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 tells kind of what's going to happen to Edom. Now, part of what is said there is, is saying that they're going to be made small is because they think that they're big. So, in the next few verses, it tells us why they think that way. Um, look, uh, look here uh, in verse three. It says, "The pride of your heart has deceived you. You who live in the clefts of the rock, in your lofty dwelling, who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground?" Though you soar aloft like the eagle, though your nest is set among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. So from the, the these Edomites, they consider themselves very lofty. They consider uh, their they can kind of how uh, remember when uh, when he was talking about how Satan uh, considered his throne above God's above uh, above God's throne. Well, and this is kind of similar language to what was said there. You know, they they think that they're, you know, high up. And God's saying, no, you're not. And he's already told them, he said, you're going to be brought low. You're going to be, um, you're, you're going to be completely dismantled. And so we understand that it was pride. And we know that pride comes before the fall. And so there's a big fall coming for them because of the pride that they have in their hearts. Now, in, in talking about um, in talking about uh, Petra, what we was just talking about, since y'all been there, um, Petra was considered a pretty impregnable um, place to, to be because uh, it was hard uh, because it, it does have there is some elevation there, but it was hard to get in and out of that place. Uh, in mass, uh, because there's so many little narrow, like going into Petra, where the where, where it's actually uh, canyons. where it's actually carved into the rocks and in the canyons, and all those caves that go throughout there, you could it wouldn't take very many people to bottleneck yeah. these things. So you know, it's trying to get bit ambush. Yeah, trying to get a whole army through there, like you know, say somewhere else where it was nothing but plains and rolling hills. It, you know, it, it was they were able to defend it much better. So you know, they they felt like they had a strategic advantage over their enemies, and and they're going to find out that they that they don't, uh, because the Babylonians were such a brute force uh, that it, it, they just couldn't they couldn't handle them. So that that's what's coming. But they they thought lofty. They thought they had you know that was the same thing when you get to Revelation, and. I want to say maybe Sardis. I can't remember. Um, I, we'll talk about it when we get to that one. But they had uh, they they had a strategic position uh, where it was almost impossible to get uh, to where the the, the fortifications were uh, 
uh, on top of this giant hill because they were just sheer cliffs. And uh, as as they were watching, uh, they were watching, uh, trying to figure out how to, you know, get get in there. One evening, they saw, uh, they found a hidden passageway where they saw uh, some of the uh, soldiers going down the side of the mountain on a cliff. Uh, and there was a, a hidden pathway, so they found that hidden pathway, and that was how they were able to invade that. And if it hadn't been for them seeing that that fellow come down there, they wouldn't have, you know, they may not have figured out how to get up there. But that's how they snuck in. But they had that same idea that, you know, nobody could invade us because, you know, we don't have any weaknesses. But they did. So, um, same thing there uh, with this place. Now, it, this continues in verse 5, and it says, if thieves, if thieves came to you, if plunderers came by night, how you have been destroyed? Would they not steal only enough for themselves? If grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave gleanings? Now, here's, uh, it says, how Esau has pillaged, his treasures sought out. All your allies have driven you to your border. Those at peace with you have deceived you. They have prevailed against you. Those who eat your bread have set a trap beneath you. You have no understanding. Will I not on that day declare the Lord destroy the wise men out of Edom and the understanding out of Mount Esau? And your mighty men shall be dismayed, O Teman, so that every man from Mount Esau will be cut off by slaughter. So that's, that's, that's telling them that they're going to be brought down. And not only that, they're going to be uh, completely ransacked, uh, all of their provisions will be taken and it says that they will be slaughtered. And, that, and that's a pretty, uh, pretty harsh judgment on them. And it was all because of their pride. Right. Now just give you, a, a, on the map here, just give you a little indication about um, just kind of, a, kind of the locality here of Edom. Uh, Edom, it, its border came right to the south of the Dead Sea and went out to the, uh, the desert area here. And then it, it, it extended down uh, farther, farther south than this. But uh, this Basra, uh, this was the capital city right here of Edom at the time. Is this the Jordan straight, coming straight down out of the Dead Sea? Right there. Right there is the Dead Sea. Yeah, I know that, but I said Jordan. Um, I'm not sure if that's called the Jordan River there. I know it is on the northern part, but I can't remember if it's called that down here. Well, it, we went to a place in, in Jordan, and they said where Jesus got baptized. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it, it it was below the Dead Sea. I, I can't remember. Now, I know that this is called the Jordan River Valley, this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I can't, I, I can't remember if this is still called the Jordan River or not. Well, I, it, it, they, they called it the Jordan Boy. I mean, it, it could be. I just, I can't remember. Yeah. I can't remember. I'll, I'll look that up and see if I can find it. Okay. Because I... I I'm just stumped at the moment because I just don't know. Um, but I will look that up and we'll find out. Um, but, you know, that, that just gave you an idea of, of the area that they had. And also just give you an idea uh, in relationship to Judah. Um, you know, here, you know, Judah went on down through here. This, this is just a, a big plot of here, so you really can't see. Uh, but you know, Judah went on down here, all the way down to uh, all the way down to Egypt. That was their border. Uh, so you know, this they were always fighting between them over this, especially this land area here. Yeah, were, it was pretty. Fertile. They, they were always fighting. There's a over fertile it. valley in there. Yeah, they they were always fighting over it. Uh, but here's the thing: in order to understand the the connection um, between the between Judah and Edom, as I said, you have to go back. Um, but let's read verses 10 through 14, and then we'll talk about that connection. So verse 10 here says, Because of the violence done to your brother Jacob, 
Shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. Now, that tells us one thing right there. All right, it says, because of what the violence done to your brother. So it's talking about Edom, and it's talking about your brother, Jacob. Now, Jacob was given the name Israel. So he's saying that these are brothers. So follow the connection. Go way back to Genesis when, you know, Abraham had Isaac. Isaac had who? Jacob and Esau. The Edomites are descendants of Esau. So Jacob and Esau, they had a bro they fought. They had brother brotherly feuds. Well, their descendants, Esau's descendants here in Edom, they continued fighting as brothers. Two countries of, of relatives were fighting over each, you know, fighting with each other. And this, this continued for a long time. Now think, go way back in Genesis when that occurred all the way to here. You know, that's probably, uh, it could be a thousand years, maybe somewhere in there. Uh, might be a little bit more, just given the time frame, but maybe a thousand years. Uh, plus more that they've been fighting with each other. And so that's a long time for a brotherly feud, isn't it? Um, the, descendants, the descendants of Isaac and Ishmael, they've been fighting even longer. Uh, that's the uh, Christians and the Muslims. Or Jews Christians versus the Muslims. Because that would be, uh, that would be the, the brotherly fighting of, of Isaac and Ishmael. Where's the Palestinians come in? Uh, what, what, that's, that's a whole not, that's a whole other... That's a that's a whole another can of worms. Okay. But uh, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll cover that you know one day. Well, it's got, that line's got to come in there way down. I mean, because that that they have hated, hated Israel from day one. They won't run. Really, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean that that was you know the the borders of Israel have been that right there. Um, you know, the natural borders of Israel, but uh, we'll, maybe one of these days we'll get into that whole Palestinian uh, debate. But that's the connection. So when he's talking about here, you know, how you've treated your brother, uh, they have not treated each other well, but Edom especially had mistreated those in Judah uh, oftentimes. And it says here, um, verse 11 says, On that day you stood aloft, on that day that strangers carried off his wealth, and foreigners entered his gates, and cast lots for Jerusalem, you were like one of them. So when Babylon came down and destroyed Jerusalem, Edom had stood, and it says that they stood aloft, they were looking and seeing what was happening, and they were cheering it on. Uh, they were, they were um, glad that this was happening. And, and they were they were sort of a uh, in, in an alliance uh, with Babylon, and there he said that he said and, and you were like one of them. He's basically saying that you were no different than those who came down and destroyed your brother. In verse twelve, said, but do not gloat over the day of your brother in the day of his misfortune. Do not rejoice over the people of Judah in the day of their ruin. Do not boast in the day of distress. Do not enter the gate of my people in that day of their calamity. Do not gloat over his disaster in the day of his calamity. Do not loot his wealth in the day of his calamity. Do not stand at the crossroads to cut off his fugitives. Do not hand his over his survivors in the day of distress. Now what he's talking about there is that not only were they cheering, but when Babylon, you know, he's talking about don't do these things when it happens. So, you know, whether if he's, if he's prophesying um, a, a coming judgment, so may, you know, typically a prophecy is something that quite hasn't happened yet. So if this is a prophetic message and not just a strict judgment on them, then there are things yet to come. And he's saying, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this when it happens. But yet, when it does happen, we know through history and we know through the Word here, we know what does happen. Edom, as Babylon came down, 
and was ransacking Judah, we know that people were trying to escape over into Edom. And they were giving, handing over survivors to the Babylonians. They were also killing some of them. So when we know that they did not treat them well. We know that they did a lot of terrible things here to their kindred. And so God's calling them out on that. And, and God is telling them, don't do that. Because judgment is on the way. In verses 15 through 16, the deeds that they have sown will now be reaped. It says, verse 15, For the day of the Lord is near upon all the nations. As you have done it, it shall be done to you. Your deeds shall return on your own head. So the things that they've done, not only against their brother, but also against the Lord, he's saying, you're no different than all the other nations that will be judged. Now we know that in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, we know that uh, in the other uh, minor prophets, we know that they've already talked about and given addresses to where the nations will be judged. And so, you know, he's saying here, he says, you're no different than the rest of these people. You're going to be judged. The things that you have sown, you will now reap. And I think, you know, if you look at any nation in history, whenever any nation starts sowing, sowing evil, sowing discord, sowing oppression against their brother, it's not, it's not too long down the road before they start to reap those things. And I think if you look at what has been sown in America, you know, we're reaping some of those things that have been sown. And so, you know, or, or the other saying that the, the, the chickens have come home to roost. Now it continues on. Um, and this is where, if you look at verses 17... Um, did you look at verses 17 on down through uh, the end of the book? This is where it starts talking about restoration. It says, But in Mount Zion there shall be those who escape, and it shall be holy. And the house of Jacob shall possess their own possessions. The house of Jacob shall be, shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau stubble. And they shall burn them and consume them. So there's already saying that uh, there will be favorability with the house of Jacob, which is Israel. But the house of Esau, which is Edom, they will not be favored. It said that they will become rubble. And it says... Um, There were, it continues, in the house of Esau stubble, and they shall burn them and consume them. And it continues, and it says, There shall be no survivor for the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken. Now, that's, that's a pretty, that's, that's a pretty, uh, pretty big condemnation for a nation, that there's not going to be any survivors. And I was reading one commentator, and, and they, they made a comment and said that there's nobody today that can trace their heritage back to Edom. Mm. Now, I, I don't know if they had, they didn't have any footnotes to back that up, so I don't know that, but here it does say what the Lord says here is that there shall be no survivor for the house of Esau. You know, And if the Lord says that, then I have to take what He says at His word. Mm -hmm. because, at, because after this, Edom... Ceased, ceased to exist because it was no longer Edom. Um, this area became uh, down here uh, as it become um, during the uh, during the Greek and Roman times, especially like with the Romans as they came in. Uh, this was this was called Idumea down here. Uh, this area was Idumea and the Nabataeans, and so we see some of their heritage come up uh, in. In Rome, um, and just give you a little backstory about that. Uh, this is the area um, down here, the the, the Nabataeans and the Idumeans. That's where Herod the Great was descended from. So he had he had some Jewish heritage, which helped win him favor, which which is what gave him helped get him control over this area. And this was the Herod that killed all the babies um, when Jesus was born. 
And so he came from this area down here. But like I said, at that time it was called Idumea and uh, Nabataean. <clears throat> but looking at this promises of restoration there, verse 19, it says, Those of the Negev shall possess Mount Esau, and those of the Shephelah shall possess the land of the Philistines. They shall possess the land of Ephraim and the land of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. The exiles of this host of the people of Israel shall possess the land of the Canaanites as far as Zarephath. And the exiles of Jerusalem who are in uh, Sepharad shall possess the cities of Negev. Saviors shall go up to Mount Zion to rule Mount Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Now, what it's saying here is saying that all, all of these lands, all of these people who used to oppress Israel and used to fight with Israel and were just a thorn in her side all these years, what he's saying is that Israel will go and take their lands. See, now this here, see right here, this is uh, Philistia, and this is where the Philistines were. Now, they fought with Israel all the time. And, you know, we've already covered that. Now, this area here is called the Shephelah. These are like the coastlands. This is like where it starts going downhill. Uh, and it gets into uh, this area here. It starts getting to like the marshland and things like that. It's saying that all, all these people here will go and take over all this land here. Uh, the people here down here in the Negev. This, this would, uh, down here would be considered the... Uh, the Negev area, the Negev desert, and said that all these people will go in and they will take control of this. All the people here will go and take control of this. So they will get, in the end, all the nations who tried to prosper against them, in the end, they will not because they will control all this land. And so that's a promise of restoration, but that's a... That's a that's one of those future, far off future um, predictions, because we know that that has not happened yet. We know that Israel has this land, but there's still areas that they don't have control over, and we still know that everybody around Israel still hates them and wants to see them wiped off the map. So we know that that hasn't happened yet, and there's coming a day when it will happen. So that's. That's the book of Obadiah. That's what it's about. Um, you know, if you read it through a few times now that you know a little bit about uh, Obadiah, you know more about Esau uh, and his descendants who, who became Edom, and also with you know what was going on there. You know, go back and read it again. I'm sure you'll find some things there that will jump out at you. Uh, but that's all that we have for the book of Obadiah. Does anybody got any questions? So then all that took place about the 6th century? Yes. Yeah, that would have been, uh, like I said, that would have been around the time of Jeremiah. Um, that's what they speculate. They don't know because the, we don't really have a time frame. That's, it's really, it's more of a, a, uh, a skillful guess is what they're doing. But that's that's what a lot of people seem to think that it, that that that's when Obadiah was prophesying was around that time. Well, was uh, this is shot in the dark? But was Jericho on the map then? Yeah, it was. Yeah, he goes back a long ways, don't it? Archaeologists say Jericho is the oldest city in the world. Really. But the, the, the Jericho in, in later times was not the same place as the, Jer of the original Jericho. So Jer uh, the, the city of Jericho actually was on one side of the Jordan uh, versus the other side. Well, let's see. So it was on... It was in, the, it was in that same area. It was on the west side. But it was, in different, it was in different locations. But still it was in the desert, right? Yeah. It was still within miles of each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was still in the general area. It was yeah. just it was across the across the river. Okay. It's, you know, when you get into studying that, that's pretty interesting how all that shaped out. But I didn't I didn't know that that Jericho was 
know the city in, in existence. That's that's uh, that's what many archaeologists say. Wow, that's that's incredible. Well, that's that's all we have for Obadiah. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, appreciate you listening.